the Noxie and Cax Show with Liz Knox and Kara L. M. Ard. <laughs> Let's get it. Go. Welcome back, sports fans, to the Noxie and Cax Show. I'm your host, Liz Knox. This is Kara L. M. Ard. Uh, before we introduce our next guest, Cax and I are pumped to announce that there will be a Team Harvey's versus Team Sonnet rematch in Peterborough on March 26th. Can't wait. So that game is going to be at 7.05 at the Peterborough Memorial Center, PMC. Uh, they've got an all-female broadcast team, and the tickets are available at tickets.memorialcenter.ca. So it's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, the rivalry between Toronto and Montreal continues. So Toronto's down right now, but you never know. Maybe we'll pull out a big dub in Peterborough. Maybe we should do a bet on this one. Yeah, hosted maybe. by OHL's Peterborough Pete's. And I think that's a good idea. So maybe comment some fun, uh, some fun bet ideas. Nothing too harmful, please, because... <laughs> We know how history plays out. Um, anyways, our guest today is honestly why I think Cax and I really wanted to start this podcast. Yeah. When we talk about the PWHPA, all eyes tend to land our, our Olympic players who we are equally proud of. Mm -hmm. But if you've ever been in the locker room of one of these teams, often the glue girls, as we call them, are not the ones in the red, white, and blue. They're not the ones in the Maple Leaf. These are the players who have shown up through snowstorms and flight cancellations. They drive from work right to the rink and they try <laughs> to squeeze in a meal. They're also the ones who will probably bust the move in the room and buy the first round after a big win or a tough loss. So I think that pretty much sums up our guests. Um, so proud and happy to introduce PWHPA from the Boston region team Bowers, Megan Turner. Woo! Mm -hmm. Yes, Megan. Thanks, Thanks for guys. coming on. How yeah, are you happy feeling? to be here. Oh, so good. Coming off a, a well, a crushing weekend in, in uh, Washington, but a great one regardless. So, yeah, feeling great. Um, it was a, a big high that this past weekend. So, feeling good. Yeah. And so, uh, obviously, Turner's team was there. Uh, Toronto was there. Cax was not there. So, we oh. have to update Cax and, you know, some of the listeners on uh, some of the things that went down. And, Funny enough, I actually heard this story through Kristen Richards. And as soon as she told me this, I was like, I got to get this girl on the podcast because this is like, I'll, I'll let you tell the story, Turner, but you were selected uh, with the other three captains of each region to drop the ceremonial face off at the Capitals Kraken game. So why don't you tell our listeners kind of what happened? <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. I just got a text. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is like my life in a nutshell. Like I don't know things until the last minute and then it's just like complete panic until it happens. And I'm like, okay, that wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, we're like me, Alyssa Taylor and Megan Greaves and my team are like literally scooting around DC for hours. We're just like seeing the monuments. I'm like, this is great. You know, just going to go to a caps game later, whatever. Um, I get a text from, Cross, Alexis, Crosley Miller at like four. And it's like, hey, like be in the lobby at five for pup drop. I'm like, okay. Like I, I told Krista I'd meet her there. Yeah, it's fine. She's like, yeah, but the people who are doing puck drop have to be there earlier. And I was like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. And so I'm like, there's <laughs> mind you, there's two turners and three Megans on our team. So I'm like, oh. you either got the wrong turner or you got the wrong Megan, but it ain't me. And so I'm like, <laughs> Guys, do you have the right number? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, do you have the right Megan? She's like, yep. And I'm like, okay, I guess we're doing this. And then I'm like, first thought is like, oh, wow, this is cool. And then second thought, it was like, I do not look good enough to stand <laughs> in front of thousands of people <laughs> and hockey players. <laughs> like, like, there's no way. So I'm like, oh, my God. So um, I – like we tr think about like, do we get in the Uber, like drive back? So we get in an Uber to go back to the hotel and it takes us like farther into DC. Like we messed up the Uber, like oh, so no. classic. It, like and we were like, what is going on? So we ended up going to Walgreens. I spent like 70 bucks at Walgreens and got like makeup, which I never ended up using and a straightener. And we pop into this like bar near the uh, Capital One Arena and we're like standing there. It's like all the Capitals fans. I swear to God, like maybe a third of the people that went to that rink were in this one bar and we're like straightening my hair. And people were clearly like not too happy that I'm just like in the way. And they're like looking at me Wait. with like three heads. So you're, 
in the middle of the bar straightening your hair. You're not in the bathroom or anything. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the bathroom. Okay. Oh, you know the bar would be better. I'm not. No. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't find an outlet in the bar area. Um, so we went to the bathroom, but still, like, they're in and out. Like, everyone, you know, people are coming in and out. There's, like, four stalls. And they're like, what is this person doing? And so, obviously, I don't know how to do anything with my hair, which is why I'm wearing a hat today. So, I'm like, creeps, you got to do my hair. So, she's, like, straightening my hair. It looks just atrocious. But like, she's doing a great job. And anyways, like get the text from Pete. He's like, all right, meet outside. And I'm like, oh my God, like, what am I getting myself into? I was like, good enough. So we, um, we like get out there and I'm thinking to myself, like every person that walked in this, like in this bathroom is probably like, oh, like this is really weird. Someone just using a bar bathroom to like straighten their hair, like must be, I don't know, going to meet up with someone. What a disaster. And thinking, like, there's one person in the stands that's like, Oh, I get it now. That's the girl I was in the bathroom. Like, it's a win for me. Um, and so you just ditched it though. Like you just ditched the makeup and the straight. Oh, you can't yeah. take it into the game. No. So the straightener and the and the brush and the makeup. I don't know where they went. Like maybe they're maybe <laughs> someone picked them up. Maybe they're like, hey, free straightener. <laughs> it's like a twenty four dollar one. You know. And that's oh my god. Um, so so yeah, I ditched ditched that real quick uh walked in feeling like just so classy this is like you know you have the dreams where you like can't tie your skates or something like this is like my panic mode <laughs> so <laughs> i meet up with them and we uh we go in and then it was pretty much smooth sailing from there it was actually really cool pete brought us down um felt like a you know vip walking in there's like this little all you can eat all you can drink area downstairs um and then we like watched warm ups, which was really cool. And then they had us like, you know, gave us the spiel and we went out and, and dropped the puck. Uh, and I didn't slip. And that's all I care about. I was like, just, <laughs> I don't care at this point what your hair looks like. Just don't eat it on the ice. Like, oh, you gotta be a good representative. So, um, yeah, it was good. And then uh you know shook their hands and then we're getting on the bench and Ovi like extends his hand out and I'm like I don't need it but I'm like okay I'll take another <laughs> opportunity to hold your hand <laughs> that's exactly what Rich said too she's like part of me is like offended like I don't need you to help me but okay <laughs> uh exactly right I was like yeah I'm I'm a strong independent woman but I'll take it <laughs> I'll take it you're you're Alexander Ovechkin I'll take it <laughs> yeah right just the hand just like envelops mine um but yeah, no, it was awesome. So it was it was a great experience, and they obviously took like awesome care of us. So turned out okay. Didn't fall. Had to wear a mask, so wasn't too worried about my dark circles and uh, <laughs> and all all as well. <laughs> That's amazing. So you turned quite the bad situation into uh, an an amazing one, I guess. And then to be honest with you, I feel like even just the feeling to walking down in the hallway where they come out probably and everything was like quite amazing that rink is fabulous too so i'm jealous yeah. i'm not gonna lie it was, it was pretty cool and like yeah it was just awesome like i don't know once you get in the ice and you look at like that full rink obviously i've been on these type of these types of sheets when there's like it's not full but when you get yeah. there and you see like all those fans it's like this is you know this is something that like could one day be and hopefully will be a reality for mm -hmm. us too and um i i it's cheesy but i feel like in a way i was like you know this is this is hopefully the future for for us as as you know it is the present for the guys so um it it was pretty cool and i think the um obviously the capitals organization was really great to us but the crowd was also really um receptive and and was giving us some love so it was a it was a really great uh, experience all around yeah it might be That's cheesy awesome. but you just gave me goosebumps so yeah. it works um <laughs> yeah like just want to echo exactly what you said everyone from the staff uh to the capitals organization to the fans that came out it was it really was quite an experience in Washington. And um, like you say, I mean, I, I hope that that's just a taste of, of the future and, you know, not so distant. Um, so we will bring it back uh, to, to kind of your childhood, your upbringing, um, growing up with three brothers. Just tell us a little bit about your family growing up in New Hampshire and, you know, kind of where you went to school, how you got into hockey, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah sure. So um, I, I have 
uh, another. I have my sister too in there. Oh, and sorry, so sister. That's okay. I left that's her okay. out. <laughs> She'll kill me. Um, no, <laughs> you brought her back. You brought her back. It's so good. Let's you, talk about your sister. Only you. your sister. Yeah, Don't forget your Actually, brothers. <laughs> that was my fault. I should have told you. No, I. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> she's gonna be like, "Are you kidding me?" Um, <laughs> So I grew up in uh, in New Hampshire, lovely New Hampshire. Is honestly like I don't think I appreciated it then, but I definitely appreciate the peace and quiet now. I like I go up to my parents' house. I'm like, oh, there's nothing going on. This is so great. Um, but I am the last of five, Whoa. so the baby. I got, yeah, I got I got beat up a little, but I used <laughs> it to my advantage. You know, I like I can cry when I want to. <laughs> You're the crier that got them time. in trouble, eh? What was that? <laughs> You're the crier that got them in trouble at times, oh, didn't you? You bet. You bet I was. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't actually be hurt. I have so many vivid memories of, like, just turning it on and, like, crying. And my mom turns her back and I just look at my brother and I'm like, you're in big trouble, <laughs> yeah, buddy. You're in deep <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he I, got you. I think it still haunts him. <laughs> Um, and did, did they all play hockey or did they you know what do you tell us a little bit about your siblings what they do yeah yeah so they all played hockey uh, my parents never played i don't even know if they could skate honestly um but they all they all played uh at one point or another my uh oldest brother um played club and and then the one above me played club as well so um they uh, two Marines, uh, my oldest and second oldest brother um, are or were Marines. And then um, my sister is a very successful banker, knows is, is much more intelligent than me. Um, and then my the brother right above me is pretty cool. He was in the Air Force and now he's a comedian, you know, pursuing that life. He went from very stable job to uh, a, a very not so stable job, but... <laughs> We try to support him. His his Instagram handle, I have to plug it, is Kevin Turner Ha Ha. Kevin Turner Ha Ha. We're so all going to follow. We'll Look out. Follow. We'll give it a follow. Look right out, because now you're getting sure. women talking fans, and that can be quite the dangerous territory to get into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. He sent me, like, this bit that someone did on women talking, and it was, like, funny, but I was, like, I was seething afterwards. I was, like, oh, it's funny, but I can't handle this. It's making fun of me too much. But, <laughs> oh, that's um, fantastic. Yeah. So, and um, my dad, my mom is, like, a... Uh, she doesn't help sell, but she like goes out to hospitals and helps them like um, implement their like monitors and things like that. And then my dad's a pilot for Delta. So um, that uh, yeah. got me some free flights back in the day. Now I'm back with the rest of the civilian population <laughs> sitting in coach, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's, that's awesome. amazing. And then, and then you went to, uh, where'd you go to school when you, uh, grew up, you went to prep, I believe right before QPAC. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about, uh, maybe your, like the, the hockey part of it all, you know, and why, uh, Phillips Exeter Academy and then how it got you to QPAC is how I like to say it. Quinnipiac <laughs> University. Yeah, no, one, no one can say it. I even like saying something was like, am I saying it right? Um, <laughs> Yeah. So uh, my parents, I started skating when I was two. So my parents had like this rink. I'm the youngest. So my brother was like 10 by the time I was born. So they like built this little rink in our backyard. Um, and it's just like the highlight of every winter for all of us. Um, right. Like really just privileged to be able to have that space and and be able to um, you know, have the, the people above me to teach me how to skate too. So uh, you know, played since I was four and then uh, went to Bishop Garden, which is a private Catholic school in, in New Hampshire, and then went off to Phillips Exeter to um, to play, to go to school and play hockey. <laughs> I love that correction. You got to get the order right because, <laughs> oh, yes, me. teachers will always correct you. Parents, teachers always say, you're there to go to school and yeah. play hockey. We're all like, yeah, I went there for hockey and I kind of studied sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah and like at Exeter too it's very I don't know everyone is really really smart so I was like 
I don't know if I belong here, but I'm just going to keep playing hockey and hopefully they let me stay. Um, but this it was girl, really just wait till we talk about your degree yeah, and, then, and then you say, can say that. Okay. Yeah. No, we're going to shut that to, down. You're talking to Noxie and Jack. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> These get degrees. That's where we're at. So, uh, <laughs> But it's it's nice that you're being modest, Turner. That's very that's very you. Um, Well, what can you say? (laughs) Um, It's true. I was like, I was like, okay, these people are geniuses. Uh, Yeah, it was just a great, really formative. I was like away from home, but close enough, and it was just, um, it was awesome. I loved it. I, I like. I think the best thing about that school is the way they teach classes. Like you sit around a table and you just discuss, right? So you really start to learn how to like form your own opinions. Right. And my parents obviously have their own and maybe mine are a little different from theirs now. And then however they feel about it, I feel good about it. Cause it, (laughs) I was like, you know, talking to people who are totally different than me and yeah. having to like really back up my own opinions. And then I was like, Oh, I don't know if I actually believe some of these things. I don't really have much uh, evidence to, to back it up. So uh, really challenged me in that regard. And I think really helped me kind of form like where I'm at today mentally and, and how I see the world. So it was, it yeah. was a great experience. I um, probably prepared you really well for university as well too, right? Smaller. I don't know. Actually, the the class is like size at QPAC, but um, that's basically what St. Lawrence was all about too. Very converse, conversational uh, situation and then getting everyone's opinion involved and learning from each other. So I'm, I'm assuming there's some classes that were like that too there um, that prep you up for university. Yeah, it, it definitely did. And um, I think it just like obviously the technical skills they really honed, but like, yeah, to your point, just coming to class prepared with not yeah. only like, what do you think about this, but why do you think that way? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was really, really helpful. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I, I can't say anything but better about Exeter and, and the same for Quinnipiac, like or QPAC, however, however you say that. <laughs> Go so, Quinnipiac, it's all good. I'll stick yeah, with like whatever. Like, uh, Some people might correct me. I don't know. <laughs> um, I just call it the Q. The Q. Yeah. So okay, that the works. Q. That works. Yeah. So Love let's it. move into the Q a little bit. <laughs> um, we, you wore number six, and we like to get sometimes the the story behind the number. So maybe just tell our listeners why you wore six at at college and how long you wore it for, even. Yeah. Um, so I wore six, and I luckily I'm still wearing it today. Um, my I think my oldest brother started wearing it and then we all just like wore it. So it's kind of a, a family number. Um, I, I like got it tattooed on my body in college. Like, you know, it was like my first <laughs> tat and I was like, I'm so cool. I'm going to get this Roman numeral six. In like, We've like, all been no there. One girl. Can see it. <laughs> We've all oh, been boy. there. <laughs> Listen, college yeah. kids, if you're tuning into this, don't do the tattoo in your first don't do year. It. Don't do it. <laughs> Just wait till you're senior. And if you still want it, then do it maybe. But yeah. like, or if it's a team thing, then maybe you should do it. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Think about it twice. Yeah. I don't, oh man. I don't, well, th- I don't, I don't think you really regret tattoos though. I mean, no. it just, you just look back and you remember kind of the kid that you were when you did it. You know, it's, that's how I feel about some of my tattoos anyways. I'm just like, you know what? that's how I was when I was that age, when I was just a young kid thinking this was the right just thing embracing, to do. Just embracing all phases. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Your journey. I love it. Exactly. Oh, so, it. To get to our point about Turner being extremely humble, um, mm-hmm. you completed a three in one dual degree business program, earning a bachelor of science in your first three years. And then your MBA in your last year, all while, while playing division one hockey. And then you interned at a big four accounting firm, which you're still <laughs> at, right? Are you still Lifer. there? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Are we allowed to <laughs> tell everyone where you work? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Oh yeah. So Prince uh, Waterhouse Cooper, this is a, this is Cooper's, right? Yeah. Cooper's. Uh, PwC for short, just like the Q, because no one can say that mouthful. <laughs> just say PwC. PwC. Um, 
Yeah. So, which, it, you got the intern and then they offered you a job after the internship to straight into work, right? Yeah. They, the so they actually summer? like send you to Disney World. They like wine and dine the hell out of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? They, yeah. And then, yeah. It's a recruiting it's, trip 101 right there. <laughs> it's it better than a scooter. <laughs> Wait, what I'm going to tell you is don't get too drunk. <laughs> don't get too drunk where you can lose your job. And so you're there and you're like, Oh, there's so like, you know, there's so many fun things, but it's like the one person they always tell you about. And you're like, okay, I feel like it's don't more want to be that guy. Yeah. You don't <laughs> yeah. want to be that guy. Okay. Wait, back it up a little bit and then we'll talk about the work. So first of all, completed your degree in three years. How the heck did you do that? Yeah. Let's go with that. And then how did you time manage yourself with hockey and everything? Like that's just nuts to me. Yeah, um, I watched all the Princeton girls because they're a travel partner <laughs> and they were doing homework in the lobby on road trips. <laughs> Just kidding. Good I'm for you. Go. I was a girl who grabbed the backpack and tossed it when Friday or Thursday <laughs> happened. And I said, I'll get back to it someday. Don't need to think about this for the weekend. <laughs> <Nope>. See ya. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. They Seriously, though, they were all like always they were doing homework all the time. I'm like, I don't know how you do this. I actually didn't do much homework on road trips. I kind of. Oh like dedicated that time to hockey i'm also like the world's worst procrastinator like until someone's asking me for it like it's just not gonna get done i don't know like (laughs) i think honestly after this podcast we could make a like prototype of like how to be an elite female hockey player everyone says says they're procrastinators everyone works well under pressure everyone's like no like hockey time is hockey time and school time is school time so you just like relax when you're at hockey and enjoy it and then just stress for like a couple of days so you get that one assignment done then you forget about it again you're like all right back to being a hockey player i'll get it. <laughs> i didn't know that that's a prototype but i'm happy oh, yeah. that i'm not a loner <laughs> not at all not at all so many so many of you guys so Me did too. you have did you have to to, to cax's point sorry to kind of get sideways there but yeah. did right. you have to take it like a um, like a fast track program to complete in three years? Did you take more courses than, than the average student? Or summer school or something? Like, yeah. yeah. So we, we got on campus. Um, two of us as freshmen came early for summer. Um, so we got there in like July. And then I take like two, I took two classes then. But yeah, t- so they, they, Quinnipiac is really cool. They do, they have these like three plus one, four plus one programs that mm-hmm. allow you to get your MBA. So they like help you like your electives for your bachelor's are actually your beginning courses for your master's. Oh, nice. um, so, and I think that's not just business school. They do that for like others, I think. Um, so they help you out. But yeah, I was there most summers and it was nice too. Cause I got to um, like, there's no one home for me. It was my parents and they're traveling all the time. So it worked out well. I got to be with my friends. We got to like lift and, get our butts kicked every day by coach B, um, in the weight room. And it was, uh, it, yeah, it, I loved doing it. And so I would take like two to four classes in the summer as well. Um, wow. and I think that helped like ease the load during the year. And also like shout out to all the professors at Quinnipiac. They were so like flexible and they, I think they knew that like your sports time was really important to you. And so they would, I don't think I had one professor that was like, not flexible with my with my hockey schedule so yeah it it was a obviously like worked hard but at the same time had people around me that that helped me get there and and helped me do it so that's amazing and a humble way to say it again i I was Uh, just gonna say i'm like this is like this is it this is the kind of player that we're so lucky to walk in to our teams and have on us on our side because yeah i mean We'll get back to that. I'll pump your tires later. It's fine. Um, do it. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know how you felt about the two to four class in yeah. the summer. How did you feel about that? Absolutely not. I, <laughs> so good for you. Like, yeah. That was, was like, not really? happening. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Summers were training and fun times and yeah. maybe working here and there. 
and that's about it. But yeah, and summer tournament, Noxie and I played on the same team, you know, like reigning champions. To- we had to go back. Really? We should be focusing on school. We had a rush hockey tournament for old people to win. <laughs> Shout out to Kelly. <laughs> that was our focus. <laughs> What's oh, the age boy. limit on it? Uh, <laughs> you know what? None. I don't know if there is one. <laughs> uh, there might be one, like, but I did it as a post grad as well too they so. <laughs> probably had to put one in because we kept coming back and they're like okay yeah. uh give up the dream this is supposed to be it's what it's like normally it's a recruiting tournament for like high school kids to try to get noticed class like it was yeah. a college you could do yeah. it when you were in school at least in toronto yeah. and then the bean town one just became a whole yeah. other level of I went to that one too. And all, all I, the, I made my comeback to hockey, I think. All the high school kids are all stressed out. They're trying to get noticed by this, this scout and that scout. And we're like in the parking lot, like cracking beers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's yeah. legit though. It's a little I, different. We won it a couple of times. Oh yeah. The, the competition was, was really good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, it was cool. And so yeah. in, in your time at, uh, at the Q at QPAC, Quinnipiac, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to keep throwing out names. I'm going to figure out no. a new one. Um, you guys actually had the cool opportunity to travel and play. Did you play in Italy, but, or did you just travel to Italy? No, we, well, I think we like, we, so we played two games, but it was definitely an excuse to just travel to Italy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was so fun. I actually don't think they've done it since. I don't know who paid for it. I don't know why we got to go, but it That's was amazing. Awesome. Like, they brought the parents the guys got to go i think as well on like a different week um but like all of our parents came and everything and we were just like a classic we're scooting around rome i love my scooters i don't know they're so (laughs) good also (laughs) scooters are the Part of the hockey prototype must have scooter um (laughs) sorry go ahead so you're scooting around you're scooting around rome that's true, actually. We all, I feel like we all love scooters. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, so, like, so classic. As soon as I got there, I left my backpack on the bus. The bus went away, and my passport and all my, like, wallet and everything were in it. Oh, oh no. my God. It was the worst. I, like, got off the bus, and I was like, oh, we're getting back on. They're like, no, the bus is gone. So I, like, called them, and I was like, hey, have you seen a backpack? And the guy's like, no. And I'm like, I literally was on your bus five minutes ago. Yeah. So good luck He's with shuffling the through passport. your passport shuffling through your cash he's like no i don't know what you're talking about like <laughs> what's in here this american passport's nice i'll put a little picture <laughs> over it <laughs> so did you end up getting like how did you get it back how did you how did you get back to the states i think i sat in the consulate in milan for like six hours like waiting while my team was like going having fun i'm like trying to get my thing back going to the police station like, oh my God, it was so classic. I was like, this is <laughs> this is not happening to me. Like as soon as we get there, it's like raining. I was like, this is just this is my life. <laughs> um, but I got it back. And yeah, we so we took like a bus up to Switzerland, did like a little tour of Zurich, um, played I think we played the Swiss national team. Cool. All I remember is I like had a really bad play and they went in and scored and it like haunts me to this day because <laughs> I just remember my coach like screaming at me and I was like, it's just the summer. Like, but I was a freshman. So it was this little exhibition me. game, relax. It's all good. Yeah. This, oh, this definitely well. won't haunt me 10 years from now. And here we yeah, are talking I, about it. <laughs> I can't believe you're, you're still thinking about that. <laughs> Oh, these every bad play, it's like stuck in my brain. Okay. But um, no, I'm kidding. I I mean, that whole trip was very vivid because it was like really fun. It was um, a really good like team bonding experience for us. And um, yeah, we just had a ton of fun. We went to like Lake Como. Um, that's definitely my favorite place. And then we went to Rome and Milan and then up to Zurich. So yeah, played like two games and we're there for 10 days. So it was definitely just that's an nice amazing. to go over. Uh, yeah, it was what, awesome. What year uh, in your career was that? What year? That was back? after my freshman year, so 2014. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> How, uh, I can't remember, but like, which one, like, uh, well, let me ask you that. Which one was your favorite year out of your college career and your favorite team, actually? Was that the year? Uh, my, I mean, I loved, I'll say it, I loved every teammate of mine. Yeah. My junior year, easily the best year. We won regular season, and then we won ECACs, yeah. and then Clarkson beat us in the NCAA, which oh, I'll never forget. <laughs> okay, I hate Clarkson, too. 
I hope you hate them too. <laughs> Clarkson just like I was saying this before, like Clarkson ruined my life every year. Like <laughs> in a, like the best way. Like I was rooted for them when it came to like ECAC. I was like, all right, like you got this, guys. But I was like, come on, like you couldn't have like let us go one time. Like <laughs> but no, I think we like our our games were like mirrored each other. Like we played the exact same game. So it was just like whichever way it went. But yeah, um, yeah, the the team my junior year was like we just clicked and I, I see it now. I think in the Quinnipiac team of, of this year, it's like just good energy, good vibes. Mm-hmm. We had a new coach like Cassie. She's amazing. I'm not related to her. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so for those, that, was, but... for those that don't know, uh, head coach at QPAC is Cassie Turner. She was with the Canadian national team. Yeah. Uh, she may still be. Is she still with them at all? She's still yeah. with the program. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I, I remember she, she was our coach like when Cax and I were under 22, way, way back. <laughs> like this is like when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, but yes, Cassie Turner, obviously same spelling. And so I, I was talking to a few of, uh, of Megan's, you know, former teammates and they were saying there was a rumor in her first year that when she came in, she was uh, Cassie's niece. And so the girls were like afraid to tell you things like, like cons basically said, like you'd walk in a room and everyone would just be like, Mm. Like, like basically calling you like a mole, like you know, the snitches here, snitches get stitches. So they would all just like, Zip. but you're not related, right? For the no. record, let, let's set the record straight. For the record, not related. Yeah. Cons like one time it, and it was summer school too. So it was like me and Marms were the two freshmen and like, I don't know. I was like, I didn't know that they all thought I was her niece, but then cons like maybe five days or like a week into summer school was like walking in the rink. And she was like, like, I could tell she had like something that was really, you know, eating at her. And I was like, what's up cons? She's like, um, so are you like Paul, like since Paul and Cass are married now, are you like Paul's niece? And I was like, what? Paul was our like ass- assistant coach at the time yeah. and they were married. Yeah. And I was like, hold on. No, no, no. And then I think like, everyone around us was everyone. I like, was like, Oh my God, thank God. So it was, yeah, it was That's awesome. so funny. <laughs> hilarious. So classic cons too, to just like, like spit it out, you know, but just I'm, come I'm forward with it. it. It didn't take too long for them to figure it out. Cause that could have caused an issue. Yeah. It could have, it could have been a really long four years for you if, if she didn't yeah. come forward then, you know, like the, you could still be milk at this rumor. Yeah, um, and, and speaking about uh, your time at QPAC, um, we did want to shout out uh, DIFD, do it for Darren, um, a great organization that works towards, uh, you know, helping youth with their mental health. And of course, this game between QPAC and Cornell, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Cindy Rousler was a, a QPAC uh, player and her best friend, Morgan Richardson, obviously Darren's sister was at Cornell. Um, and when Darren passed, I think the two of them kind of through their teams put this game together. So maybe just talk about um, that DIFD game that, you know, is annual now, uh, always, you know, yeah. Cornell and QPAC. And of course, other teams have have adopted it. But just talk about a little bit of the legacy and, um, you know, why DIFD is so important to the women's hockey community. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um it's it's personal to us just being close to Sid and and you know through that chain um but I think just in general obviously there's a stigma on mental health and and there still is today and we took that game very seriously and and we knew how much it meant to Sid and um I think that actually helped us all gain a different perspective um just on, on mental health and um and it's it's great to see how far that initiative mm-hmm. like DIFD specifically has come and how pervasive it is now throughout the hockey community. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they've done a, a really great job marketing, marketing it and, and you know, with the bell, let's talk. And um, it, it just, it means a lot to us. I think we, we took that game really, really seriously every single year. And, and we still do as a broader like Quinnipiac program. Um, and, and yes, they just have done a really good job at getting the message out and um, and facilitating the conversations around it. Right. It's not just sometimes, uh, you know, things get set up and it's like, yeah, we'll do this game or whatever it is for right. a cause. But like it feels different when you do DIFD. It feels very personal. And 
Um, I think all of us have really, um, you know, it, it, it just means a lot to us and we've really bought into, um, to that cause and pushing it forward as one of our priorities from a program perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's, and it's obviously with, with Sid there and she's a great advocate um, and a great representative for the cause and um, just is, is like such an exemplary person that it makes it really easy to follow her lead. Yeah. I I think it just really like it, it really hit close to home. Right. And um, like Jamie Lee Rattray was on that team in Ottawa uh, with those girls before they went to college and Erica Howe. And um, yeah, I mean, you, you, unfortunately you see it in the media, these youth, young kids struggling with mental health, all, you know, all ages, but uh, it's particularly, you know, hits home when, when you see it in young kids. And especially, like I said, it just, it was so, so close to our hearts being young athletes and young female hockey players uh, um, to see Darren's passing. So love to see the initiatives continue. Uh, I know in the CWHL, you know, we did a DIFD game and we had jerseys uh, provided to us um, and yeah, obviously more to come. It's a yeah, great initiative. And, that, and, and that's what, that's the beauty of the, the hockey community, right? When it comes to, uh, to that and then starting the conversations and being there for one another and, having people also speaking up or speaking about their, you know, personal, um, not issues, but like struggles. And, and I think it's the, it's, it's awesome to see people also being very receptive and mm-hmm. being a bit more aware of it. Um, cause it's all about awareness. And uh, I think that this game, I personally played in it at, uh, against Cornell as well too, when I was there in college and, it was, uh, yeah, it was awesome too. And, and everyone does it for a few, like it's almost a month now. And, and I don't know, it just, it's just so, uh, it's beautiful to see. And I think that's what makes, you know, our community so strong um, across the board, men's and women's uh, hockey. It's, you know, when we want to send a message, I think it, it gets through to people and people are also very receptive for it. Yeah. And of course, if you need help, you reach out. Uh, yeah. there's, it's a great community to be a part of. And uh, just like Cax is saying, uh, you know, we're, we're here for, for those who are struggling as well. So um, thanks for sharing that with us. I know it's, it's like I said, it's close to home for QPAC and Cornell. And uh, we just wanted to make sure we gave them a shout out. So continue the great work. Uh, we're behind you, DIFD. So let's go now to some of maybe like your personal life. I, like we don't want to get too intimate here, but um, I was, I was <laughs> deep to in, know you. Yeah. I was, know you a bit more. I was and deep in, the, in the Instagram dive, you know, I, I do my, my due diligence. I do my research. And one I thing tried. that, yeah, well, try. one thing I'll say before you go, I tried and someone didn't accept me yet. So Ooh. I did. Oh, <laughs> just no. saying, the request was sent. Wait, I um, thought I did today. Anyways, anyways, I may it's, have been late a little bit in the bed picture. Cats, but, hey. You have to be in the elite class. My to- God. I am no Nazi. <laughs> um, I'll get there one day. You know, our oh names are similar. God. There's a there's a Cax and an a, a K and X are in there. I don't know. Maybe one day. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna do it in like three seconds here. You're You're right right now. Now. <laughs> you, can go, you can proceed. I um, couldn't creep as much. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I got you. So, I, first, I want to talk about because we are talking about cats and close to home. Uh, we want to talk about this pond hockey classic that you're in because it had outdoor hockey, it had uh, beer, and it had a trophy, mm-hmm. and those are like that's pretty much why I play hockey still. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that and uh, kind of your experience where it was everything. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so uh, my wife's friend, uh, she went to UVM. So they have like, so she has some friends that are still up there. Um, and, and her friend Bridget was like, Hey, we got a spot in this team. Um, so it's on Lake Champlain up in Burlington, Vermont. Um, and it was back like a month ago and it was awesome. Like the ice every day, it was a three day ordeal. And every day it was like something different. Like the first day it was like warm and like choppy. The ice was like fairly new. I think they had like 15 rinks. Um, And then the second day it was like even warmer just like straight up slush and snow. So like (laughs) you can't even see the puck. You're just like kind of hacking away and hoping it goes in. And then the third day, it was like kind of crystal clear, but there's still just like these big divots. So you're just trying not to break an ankle. So no backwards <laughs> skating, no stopping on pucks, like just big old circles. Real. Like, big just running. 
choppy Isn't hockey. That what we all do anyways. Yeah. Wait. What are we supposed actually, to be doing? No. <laughs> actually, I, I take it back because you're like Cassie was saying. Your attention to details was huge in you, so you must be the one that yes. stops on back. I will. I go around. <laughs> I'll catch up. I'll take a little tour of this area. <laughs> I don't know. I got to watch my game from last weekend. I was doing a lot of curls. <laughs> oh, just circling. Um, but yeah, it was great. It was uh, my blades got ruined. So shout out to Blade Tech for coming in. I swapped them out yes. for this weekend. They looked great. Blade Tech. Oh, great. Um, but no, it was awesome. There was beer. They had like, I think Truly was there. Some sponsors. I think it was sponsored nice. by Labatt. Um, and it was just like, it, like those are just, that's like the hockey that I love. Obviously I love playing competitive hockey, but like when you're just with a bunch of people who are just there because they just love the game and the people in the atmosphere, it was so fun. Uh, we like, we're actually really good somehow. I don't know how it <laughs> happened, um, but we, it was like, we were really good at, we made it to like, I think the semifinals out of like 60 teams. Wow. Like, what are we doing here? But then once you got to the semifinals, people were like really taking it seriously. Was your division then, like, like women only co-ed? How, like, how are the teams? Yeah. So it was co-ed. So it was, I think they have like a lower division and then they have like a really competitive division. And then they have the middle one. That's just like, you know, a bunch of people out there for the beer. And uh, that's where we landed. I love um, that. Yeah. So there was actually a guy that was like, Oh, do they like let women play in this? And I was like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. <laughs> like, like, are you serious? Where are you from? Like, oh, that's, an old uh, that's what it is. Yeah. And so I'm like, hello, I'm right here. Still like, it's and that's it it's still a freaking uphill battle sometimes like you know all the work that that has gone into women's hockey and all the millions of viewers that tune into the gold medal game and you still have you know there's that characters change, out there though like it's so funny like they they want you to practice they're like oh we could be playing with this i'm like no you couldn't stop like <laughs> yeah, so, good luck. so obviously you guys did you guys win because i saw a medal in or a trophy in your pictures or did you steal that from somebody? Do we have a trophy? We definitely did not win. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a trophy. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was. Could have been a keg. It could have been a keg. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't. Oh, I can't remember. One too many concussions, I guess. But um, <laughs> no, we definitely didn't win. But we came close. Okay, uh, that's and, good. Yeah, it good was enough. a great time. Yeah, and you had I'm fun. happy. I just like didn't break ankles and other bones. Um, yes. Yeah, it was uh, it was rough conditions, but it was it was awesome. Would recommend for anyone, whether you play hockey or not, like just go sit there, like sit around a okay. fire and drink drink beer. It's yeah, great. enjoy the, enjoy the culture, right? <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So we're we're getting close to wrapping up, but uh, this question is like burning inside Cax and I. Yeah. Okay. So um, you've played with, and you're very good friends with a number of PHF players right? Like Dark Angelo, Emma Woods, Emma Greco. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's dozens more, just like all of us. And it, it really bothers me when, whether it's media or I, I don't even know who's making these narratives up, honestly, I don't know where it's coming from, but that there's some sort of like feud between mm -hmm. the PWHPA and the PHF players. Can we set the record straight here? Like how, just tell us genuinely how you feel about the players in the PHF. Uh, I, I don't know where that messaging is coming from. Mm -hmm. I have never experienced that. Like, yeah, to your point, I have a lot of friends in that league and I'm just happy for them that they get to play. I like when they come into town, I go to their games and I, I sit there and I'm like rooting for them, you know? So, yes. um, yeah, I, I don't know like where that's coming from, but I personally, and I don't like have never felt that way. And I know that, any like on the other side of it too they don't feel that way so exactly. it's like there's no like i think it's just a mutual respect that like we're all hockey players playing at the next level and honestly i think we're all just happy to be here like we're happy to have the opportunity to like play after college and so i'm just happy that like people are still like my friends and, and the players in that league are are still playing like grow whatever in whatever way they are they're growing the game like exactly they're bringing more people to the rink so like that's what it's about and i think we all have the understanding that like it's not about us and our like like 
you know, what we want or how yes. we see like the, the, the future of the game necessarily, but like as players at the very least, like it's just, we're happy to be playing and we're supportive of each other. Mm-hmm. And as you guys know, like we know a lot of the players and the other, on um, every team that we play against, like we all played each other in college. So yeah. we're all really close and um, yeah, you just, you're just happy for them and, and want them to play the best they can. And um in whatever form they you know they feel is right for them so yeah yeah i I, like debunk that that's ridiculous i don't think thank you i don't know anyone who feels that way and we want the best for them too like we want them to be heard we want them to get as much as they can get out of that league and everything and we also understand the decision they made it was a league that existed that they could play right from the top then then totally go and we get it yeah, we are just now, and we've been working on something that we want to, you know, maybe be better uh, than what the scenario that we currently have in women's hockey is. And it's yeah. okay. People get it. People see it differently. People respect each other's decisions. Like it, there's no right or wrong at this point, and we just need to, like, yeah, smash this. Like, crush yeah. it. it's over. Like, and at, don't, the, at the end of the day, like the PWHPA is an association of players. We are not owned by anybody we are not controlled by anybody we hired jana hefford to help direct our mission so yeah. she works for us she okay does. let's just set this straight <laughs> jana that's a direct quote okay <laughs> no but you know what i mean it's like true. this is this is an association of players who decide okay we're gonna step away and try to create something bigger and it's not that doesn't shit on the phf that just no. says what you guys have is great and it's great and we will support our teammates who are going to play there and you get your 30 game season and we're like, like Turner said, like, we'll come support you. We'll come yeah. watch your games. It is women's nothing to do with the players. It's, exactly. And they're yeah. creating opportunities. So you heard it here on the Knox and CAC show. There is exactly zero beef between the players of the PWHBA and the PHF. We wish them continued success. Uh, and the, at the end of the day, the future of women's hockey is very bright. So we can yeah. all, you know, keep our heads high in, like, in that regard. Maxi, we need like they'll need there will be a need for two league at some point. They're, they're going to be a need league. for six leagues, like yeah. And what I mean by that is we need the feeder system that gets to this pro league. So uh, regardless how it ends up, it's it's okay. And we need every single league that are currently existing. Europe, yeah. here, everywhere. So people yeah. just just tag along. We're, yeah. we're moving. Let's we're moving just forward. all enjoy this together. Yeah. Um, well, Megan, that is pretty much a wrap on again, already like almost an hour, which is just crazy. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, for being open to this. Um, sorry that I had to just like bombard you in Washington and be like, Hey, I heard you forgot a straightener. Let's get you on a podcast. Um, <laughs> but all right. That's you me. are, you are exactly, you know, you're everything that I learned about you in the you know couple minutes that we chatted on the bus. You're exactly the type of player that in person that I, I imagined you to be. So thank you sir, for you know sharing with us, being here with us today. Yeah. Thank thanks for so having me guys. This, this has been awesome. Um, and thanks for all you, you know, you both are doing to get the message out and just like market this league and um, in women's hockey in general, I think this is going to go a long way. Your point, Oxy, like it's, it's only up from here. So um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity and nice to, to chat with you both today. Yeah. And definitely more team Bauer players coming at you, uh, you know, in the coming weeks. So we got to get to know some of our Boston friends. Um, Like we said, at the beginning of the show, the Peterborough Peets will be hosting a game between team Harvey's Montreal and team Sonnet Toronto at seven Oh five on March 26th. Uh, So you can get those tickets at tickets.memorialcenter.ca and at the pwhpa.com. Again, Megan Turner, thanks so much for coming. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next episode, everyone. The Noxie and Cax Show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA. Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMR. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out SDPN.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. She scores!